bonds, corporate and government bonds, are secure investments with the security coming in various strengths. A mortgage bond has a specific security and come in first and second strengths. The debenture is an unsecured bond with the senior unsubordinated bond having a status as a general claimant with other general claims a corporation may face. There are junior subordinated debentures which are behind those and there are some cases of revenue bonds which are backed up by the income which may be the least safe of all. These are all described in the indenture of a bond. Well, the bond has a stream of payments, the annuity, the interest payment stream, often called the coupon from the time when they actually used to have a detachable coupon. The face value is a single sum, and here we'll do this computation annually, but a real world computation because bonds pay every six months, twice a year, would then be compounded twice as often at half the rate. Here we see computations for a 7% bond in a 7% world. The coupon, the interest rate at 7 points plus the face value at 100 points. Well, the face value times the single sum factor plus the interest payments times the annuity factor gives a value which we find since 7% interest at a 7% discount rate gives us a face value of 100 should be no surprise. Here's another example, a 10% bond in a 10% world. The coupon is at 10 points and the yield is at 10 points for each. The factors are different, the single sum times the face value of 100 and the 10% interest times its annuity factor at 10% in this example for 20 years and again we get a face value of 100. Well, rates do change, the Ks do go up, we'll find the values of the bonds do go down and vice versa. And if we examine an 8% bond, having examined the first row previously, that the values of the annuity stream and single sum rise and the value of the bond does climb. I've also presented off to the side on the right the value of a zero coupon bond meaning just the face value by itself and if rates rise the values of the bonds do fall. Bonds have other features of import. There may be a call provision for a prior to maturity redemption which may or may not have a call premium which is often a year's interest. If the bond's trading at a discount, that's not too relevant, but if the bond's trading at a premium because rates have fallen, then the computation to the call price is more relevant. And one may have noticed that in all these computations so far that we're using the yield to maturity, the K, the internal rate of return of the bond, a better measure of bond performance. Let's look at interest rate risk. Interest rate risk is the amount of the change in the bond price as a proportion and we will find that bonds that pay interest that generally is less than its maturity and here we'll examine two bonds uh, both paying 10% uh, going from 10 to 8% 20 year maturity and we get the two values and we find that its interest rate risk measure called the duration is some nine years. It's not actually years, but they do that by convention for reasons we will soon shortly see. And we'll see that when we examine a single payment, a zero coupon bond, if you will, and the values for the zero coupon are shown here. That's just for the face values. And we compute the proportional change of the bond over the proportional change in the total return of the two discount rates here 8 and 10 percent and we find that a 20-year bond has roughly a 20-year maturity and that turns out to be a rule and we look at a case of a perpetuity a bond that goes on forever and we find out that it has a interest rate risk of one plus its going yield and we do the two computations for the two bonds and we find 12.1 years and sure enough average of 10 and 8 is 9 
The reciprocal of 9% is 11.1. We add 1 to it and we get 12.1 years. Here's a graph putting all that together. The vertical direction is the duration. And in the rear of it is the zero coupon on the left. To the right is the maturity approaching the perpetuities. And notice that hump there contradicting Malkiel's rule of bonds that some bonds do increase then decrease in terms of interest rate risk. How do we avoid interest rate risk? A guy named Macaulay, an accountant, of course, thought of it, noting that assets equal liabilities plus equity in one period to the next. And we could take the differences of those, and to an accountant, that would be the cash flows, the sources and uses of funds. But he was interested in avoiding the risk of interest rates upon the equity of the firm. He said, therefore, let the dollar-weighted durations of the assets equal the dollar weighted durations of the liability thus ensuring that the change in equity is zero and here's an example for you uh, let's say we have a firm with assets of a hundred and the durations of the perpetuities are maybe 12 from that previous example of around nine percent yield and they want to immunize them they have 40 in equity uh, 60 in liabilities of course and that serves as a solution to give us 20 years as the appropriate maturity if we were to say use zero coupon bonds for financing to give this firm immunization from interest rate risk. Next example is barbell immunization where we have two choices we don't choose the durations and uh, let's say we have a zero coupon of 19 years a perpetuity yielding 5%, reciprocal 20, gives us a duration of 21. And we now split the liabilities into two pieces, let's say a perpetuity and its remainder from the 60, and we weight those appropriately. And the solution turns out as to be no surprise of 30 in one and 30 in the other. We split the difference, and that should be intuitive because this is the same example as before where we had a solution of 20, and here we have solutions of 19 and 21, which would be evenly weighted. Well, bonds, again, to summarize, have aspects that make them safer. They're short-term, higher rated, have mortgages, pay interest, have a higher call premium or delayed calls, and the reverse is true for riskier bonds, being longer in term, lower in ratings, debentures, having zero coupon features, a lower call price, and or are immediate. I've left out of this discussion here convertible bonds, once the darlings of Wall Street. Being convertible, they trade at the higher of the value of either the bond by itself or the stock if converted, often with a premium. And as we will see later, they have characteristics that are not unlike that of call options. And the convertible bonds are not as common as they used to be. And more particularly, they tend to be associated with lower rated securities. And the reason I don't put this on the chart is because it's a desirable feature. That's usually we associate those with safer bonds, but they're usually attached to riskier bonds. It's like going on a blind date. You want to know everything and they only tell you what's not important. The convertible bonds have a slope of the conversion value, a conversion ratio, a conversion price, and these are described in both Moody's and Standard & Poor's bond guides. This is Dr. C. Invests.